There we go. We are now live on YouTube as well. Cool. No pressure. No pressure at all. Let's give everyone a few minutes to, to continue jumping in here. Oh, look at this. We've got greetings from Michigan. Hello, Just Michigan. Fun. Hello, Michigan. <laughs> Jeff, how's Michigan? It is sunny today, so I cannot complain. There's no snow on the ground. Um, so at this point in time, it's great. But having said that, it did snow yesterday. So April snow showers bring May flowers, as somebody says somewhere. Excellent. But all right, I think it's, uh, it's uh, about time to kick this thing off as my webcam just falls off the screen. <laughs> that's how you know it's a, that's how you know we're live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You get a clear, clear shot of my keyboard. <laughs> um, all right. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. You know, depending on where you're tuning in from, we're super excited to have you here today to learn about Endpoint Insights. Marty and Garth have got some really good information they'll be sharing throughout the webinar. Um, but per the usual, before we really get started, uh, please use the Q&A function to you know, ask your questions there. It just helps Garth, Marty, and I kind of keep track of all the questions and make sure they're being answered. Use the chat functionality for literally everything else under the sun. Garth may be putting movie recommendations in there throughout the webinar. Um, yeah. if, you, if you could say where you're tuning in from, that you know, keeps it a little lively for us as well. Um, and just like the other webinars we've had, we also will be giving out four $100 gift cards um, throughout the webinar. So please you know, stay tuned until the end. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's uh, kick this thing off. So Garth Jones and Marty Miller, I think Marty and, both, and Garth should both look familiar. Uh, Garth, senior architect here at uh, right click, or at Recast Software. Uh, Marty is our solutions engineer. Um, we'll do a fun fact about both of them. So before this call, uh, I was kind of pinging Garth on, you know, what his favorite uh, 80s movie is, and he had a long list. But the one that kept coming up, which we did confirm, you can view it in the um, in the U.S. on Amazon Prime, and you can also rent it via VHS. Um, if you have a VHS player, is Ice Pirates. So after this webinar, after you're done done requesting pricing and all that fun information, check out Ice Pirates. Um, and then on Marty's side of things, uh, sometimes, which he means all the time, uh, he dreams of electric sheep. So uh, without further ado, I will let Marty take it from here. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, but I think there we go. We need, I was going to say, I think you need to move us forward. Good work. Gotcha. Excellent. <clears throat> so here's the agenda of what we're going to talk about today. Um, as you can tell, we're, we're pretty serious right now. So this, this will be a, a, a good webinar. Um, and uh, if you have other movie requests, maybe go ahead and throw those into the chat as well. Um, but anyway, uh, here's the agenda. We're going to go ahead and do an introduction uh, to Endpoint Insights. What exactly are we talking about today? What is Endpoint Insights? Um, then we're going to look at Endpoint Insights, um, get an idea of what information Endpoint Insights is adding into Configuration Manager. Um, we're actually going to take a high-level look at Endpoint Insights reporting. And um, then we will get a chance to take a look at the Endpoint Insights dashboard, which is part of the right-click tools as well, kind of a better together kind of thing. Uh, we mentioned here for Q&A, um, we'll answer your questions at the end. If you do have a question as we're going through, feel free to post it in the, in the question and answer uh, section. Um, that way we can answer it as we go through it. Sometimes it makes more sense just to, as we're going through, take a look at, at what pops up uh, and answer the questions there. We also are going to do at least one poll. I know that is coming. So let's, uh, let's actually, we're gonna get it started right now. And here's, and, um, and here's why. What we wanted to ask you was, are you attending MMS at the Mall of America coming up here in just a couple of weeks now? Um, you can go ahead and post in there. What we wanted to say is just uh, all of this stuff, if you have questions about it, we are going to be there. Garth's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Jeff's going to be there. 
Um, you can ask all of us questions about Endpoint Insights. Uh, Jeff said he really, really wanted the technical questions. So if you can come up with stumpers for Jeff, that's always good. Um, and if not, you can ask myself or Garth as well if you see us walking around. We're also doing um, some demos while we're there. Uh, I know Garth has some sessions and we have a recast session where we will talk about some of the lesser known tools, uh, but uh, we're probably going to end up talking about some of the better known tools as well if you have questions about those things. So maybe, um, Garth, do you want to go through Endpoint Insights overview and then we'll take a look at what the poll came back with? So I do. I did launch the poll, just so that you know. Uh, yeah, great. And we've got uh, about... 20% that will be at, uh, at uh, MMS, uh, I guess it's 10 days from now or so, or roughly. Um, and then unfortunately the rest are not gonna be there, which uh, is a sad thing to, to um, and just to add to that thing, uh, for the technical questions for Endpoint Insights, not only will Jeff be there, but um, Chelsea, who will be there on Thursday morning, manning the booth, will be more than happy to address all of your deep technical questions. If you don't have a deep technical question, please come see Marty and I, and we'll be more than happy to help uh, give you those things as well. I'm, I'm really glad we're calling that out because I would not want any confusion um, to happen at the show. <laughs> Absolutely. So the reason we're calling this out uh, Jeff and Chelsea help us out on the marketing side and probably uh, will smile really nicely and probably guide you to one of us if you ask deep technical questions. <laughs> that is spot on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Endpoint Insights. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Endpoint Insights is all about telling you about your devices and your environment. It's... Um, you know, telling you about more hardware inventory that doesn't exist in your environment or software inventory. Um, the idea behind it is to allow you to, to make better decisions, whether it is from a service desk perspective or from a management perspective, uh, or just better uh, decisions on deploying software within your environment, knowing what's, what's in there. Uh, do I get to control these slides or do I have to go next slide? Okay, so one of the questions that comes up a lot between Marty and myself is, you know, is Endpoint Insights just uh, reports? And the answer to that is, next slide, no. Um, and Endpoint Insights is far more than just reports. What, what it is is that we extend the inventory of uh, SCCM, our uh, uh, MECM, whatever your acronym you like, and um, what you find about that is that we will extend that inventory and then the reports are what you use for all that. So Marty is going to start showing us some of, uh, of our stuff. Oh, by the way, Marty, uh, somebody has wished you happy birthday because you <laughs> it is your birthday. Tim. It, 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 uh, we'll go with it. I don't believe it is in fact my birthday today, but we can always go with it. Uh, Garth is, is great at making sure that people feel, uh, feel happy on their birthday. Exactly. Uh, let's go ahead <laughs> and take a look real quick, uh, at some of the things that we're actually adding into config manager with endpoint insights. Um, so all of, we went ahead and grabbed one of our devices here that has, uh, essentially has that information showing up. And any of these things that you see that are listed as EI here are going to be the things that, that we are adding into the Config Manager database. So if you look, you can absolutely get more information about things like, does your computer have a docking station on it? Um, <laughs> what does, who are the local users that are on the device? Um, what monitor information, what monitors have been connected to your device? What resolution are the monitors running at? Um, all, basically all of this stuff, you can even see, does did someone go ahead and install SQL on their device? Um, and then some of the interesting things, one of the couple of the things that I think are probably more interesting than others, even though it's all real interesting, monitor is a big thing. Um, show me any information about your monitor inside of Config Manager, and you're going to have a little bit of trouble with that without uh, Endpoint Insights. 
as well as user installed programs. So when you think, when I think about user installed programs, I'm thinking about things like if a user downloads Chrome, the Chrome installer, when they try and run it, it's going to ask them, hey, uh, would you like to install this as an admin? And they can say yes, and then they have to put in their password. Uh, but if they say no, it'll say, oh, that's cool. Do you want to install it anyway? And to the chagrin of all of our uh, administrators everywhere, they can absolutely install it in what I like to call user land. Uh, so they can essentially install it as part of their user profile, um, which Config Manager isn't going to see uh, those kinds of things. So you can actually take a look and find out information about what has been installed uh, as a user program as well. So Marty, why, did, why can't you see user installed software? Why can't configuration manager see user installed? That's, that's a great question, Garth. Why can't they? I feel like okay. you're setting me up here, man. Why well, can't I they? was setting you up. <laughs> uh, um, the, the answer is, is that when configuration manager runs, it runs as the local uh, system account and therefore the computer account. And it will only see software that is effectively installed on the computer itself. Where if you install uh, user software, that installs under the registry key for the user itself. And what Endpoint Insights does is query that registry key and makes that information available to uh, all of us. So we can see in the example that Marty's expanded off that uh, as the Garth, apparently this Garth guy installed lots of stuff as a user on here and has everything from uh, Grammarly uh, installed on to this to uh, Fiddler and uh, Amazon Kindle on this uh, particular laptop. I happen to know it's a laptop. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the question was, can we see user installed software per user or per device? Um, and this is going to be able to show per user. So if you look over here where it says username, um, obviously this is Garth. So, you know, we've got him here, but that is going to, uh, if there was an additional user that's using the machine installed something, it will show as uh, that additional user as well. So the question also said, can you see it as per computer? And what we're showing right now is what you would see per computer. And there is a, um, uh, a report that will show you on the per computer scenario, but there's also another report where you can say, show me all of the software for our user, no matter which computer they're on. Um, I don't suggest doing it for my account because, uh, well. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff installed. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff installed and a lot of these computers are mine. So uh, throughout the whole thing. Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a second one in the chat about uh, app data. And uh, so as long as it gets registered in add remove programs for the user, it will show up in the um, uh, user programs. If there's more to it than that, what I would suggest is contact us. Uh, uh, if you're an EI client itself, contact the support guys with uh, area and or post it to our ideas page because we're constantly uh, um, looking and reviewing that uh, thing. Uh, there's another question from Samuel about, can we run the report for all software in the computer one report? Uh, yes, so there is a report that will show you all software for a computer in one report. So whether it is computer-based or uh, user-based, we do have a report that will show that. Absolutely. Um, Another question, does Endpoint Insights require a client to be installed on each machine? And it's almost like you, you threw in that softball so that I could hit it because I was trying to figure out a way to mention this, uh, but that's a great question. And the answer is it does require something that we call um, the recast agent to be installed. And essentially what, what it's doing for Endpoint Insights is it is allowing for these additional classes to be inventoried. Um, all of the information is still coming back to the Config Manager database through the Config Manager client communication with Config Manager, um, but this is essentially going to add additional stuff in there so that we can we can inventory this so that you can actually see these additional things uh, that exist here. 
So there's a lot of people wishing you a happy birthday, Marty, today. <laughs> well, <laughs> if only it were my birthday, that would be wonderful, everyone. Well, there is a question that asks specifically, when is your birthday, Marty? Yeah, it's uh, earlier in April than now. Earlier, we'll that earlier. okay. Earlier than now earlier. in April. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> happy on birthday. There you go. Okay. So uh, there's a question about uh, printer inventory and whether it shows it was globally mapped or user mapped. So can you click on uh, mapped uh, printers? Yep. So as you scroll to the right, so these are all showing that they were mapped as myself. Um, what you're gonna see is if you query for an individual user, you'll see all the printers available to them, whether they are local or whether they are uh, remote on this. Um, so I believe it's the fourth one up from the bottom that has BR whatever in uh, Marty's thing is the brother printer that uh, I was using particular computer now that one so if you scroll to the left i think we'll actually say yeah there it's a brother hl blah 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 that i was using with this particular uh computer um, great um so garth one of the things that i know has been a huge thing uh, that a lot of people have liked um, that I don't necessarily see here is warranty reporting. So I know that we also do warranty reporting. Uh, I'm not seeing that information here. Where am I going to see warranty reporting? Which now I have to go there. So that's, <laughs> that's I think awesome. that was supposed to be my softball to uh, you. That's oh, awesome. shoot. Either way. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look. One of the other things, and we do want to show you, we're going to talk um, kind of at a high level about what you can see in each of these categories. Um, but we did want to talk a little bit more about device warranty and how we actually can find uh, device warranty information as well. And this computer replacement cost uh, report. So we want to show this report just to kind of give you an idea of how we can actually use some of, of the warranty information and, and, and things like that. So what this is actually taking a look at is that I can grab a collection of, of computers and I can, um, depending on what I put in here for the lifetime or the, the, the um, life cycle of the device, how long I want to keep devices and how much I would like to pay to replace them. Um, I can actually get an idea of what it looks like in my environment uh, to replace, what it's going to cost to replace, and, and how soon things need to be replaced. So I'm going to grab a collection uh, here that we, we use a lot called EI Computers that has all of our, uh, has a bunch of our information in there. And we can actually see based on, because we know when the warranty started, we kind of know exactly when the computer um, when it was purchased, when it, when it started being used. And then we can get an idea of when our life cycle is going to end. Um, the nice thing here then is that you can actually see, um, and if you didn't have a whole bunch that were expired all at once, you can kind of see how it spreads out um, and, and shows the different things that we can see here exactly. Uh, you know, And it even has it separated out by laptops, desktops, and servers. The other nice thing is you can actually click anything that you see that's underlined. You're going to be able to click on it and go even deeper into what is a part of that group. So I probably just for fun clicked on the biggest one. So it might take just a second, but you can actually see, for example, which devices are expiring, who's using them, uh, serial number, all that kind of thing when uh, the warranty started and then it can tell you when the replacement year is. We clicked the expired one, so this is gonna show all the expired stuff here. Uh, can you click the third one on that list for me? I sure can. So one of the things that's kind of nice about the warranty is not only do we collect the uh, warranty date that it was started, not only the end date on it, we, we also tell you what service level you, you get for this particular uh, computer. So the particular one that we're looking at, you can see is a ThinkPad uh, T440P uh, on it. And you get all this information about the details. So what's really nice about this set 
is the first one gives you the budget planning scenarios for the whole uh, scenario, but you can actually go right down to the details on it. And you can get directly to this report. Um, you don't have to start at the computer replacement and go all the way down. You can go directly to this one. So if you wanted to look for a computer that uh, was having problems, you could go look it up and then say, hey, uh, uh, you know, what's its warranty? And uh, I should contact the vendor for that. Yep, absolutely. So there is a question about how does the warranty information populate in the database? So uh, what we're doing is we're creating, when you install Endpoint Insights, we install uh, a service called, uh, uh, wow, I swear this is T, um, RMS, which stands for Recast Management Server. And on the Recast Management Server, it queries the Configuration Manager database. It sends that off to our uh, API. Uh, our API does all the normalizations, figure out which vendor it is, captures that from the vendor itself and returns it back to the RMS server. The RMS server then um, is using something called, in configuration manager terms, called the DDR, the data discovery record. And that uh, is what's get populated within the uh, configuration manager. And this is where all the, the uh, warranty reports is reading directly from the configuration manager database. So there's another question about, is this vendor specific? Uh, AKA, uh, does it work on just Lenovo, Dell's, HP's? Um, the answer is yes, it works on all of those. But the last time I looked, I believe we were pushing over 150 different vendors. So in a nutshell, if you can find me a vendor that we are not supporting, we will contact them and see about trying to support them. So. That's, that's the short answer to all of that uh, question. Hopefully that helps you. There's a good question in chat as well. It says, um, does the warranty get checked for renewals? So if they purchase an extension on a Dell Precision Workstation, for example, uh, would it update the information here once Dell updates their information? So the, it's a slightly loaded question and I'm gonna answer it with the yes answer but it's not immediate. Uh, there is a, a time delay between that, that uh, under the default configuration manager settings could take 90 days for that to, to show up. But if you're buying it, you're likely uh, 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 renewing that 90 days, but it, it take up to 90 days for that to, to show up. Cool. Hopefully that answers your question, TJ. I'm giving you the worst case scenario and not the, the best case scenario. So. <laughs> uh, so the question, uh, so I'm not sure if I got the question answered about this. Uh, the in, so for those of you who know, I uh, used to work for Enhancesoft and Enhancesoft joined uh, Recast last February. So it's been, uh, I guess this is getting close to 15 months. Under the Enhanced Soft Warranty Information Reporting, we did store the information on the client. We're no longer doing that with the um, with the Endpoint Insights. It uh, is only stored within the Configuration Manager database. Uh, do you query some vendor API for the warranty? So what ends up happening for querying the, the information is configure we uh, uh, the RMS server. Uh, queries configuration manager and gets the make model serial numbers and things of that nature and sends that all out to the uh, recast API. The recast API does it works its magic and uh, will return the will ultimately query the vendor uh, the vendors HP HP IBM Lenovo Toshiba uh, Acer you know pick pick the, <laughs> the vendor out there. Um, that gets normalized again on, on the recast API and then returned into configuration manager. Hopefully that uh, answers your question. If, you, if that doesn't, what I encourage you to do is reach out to, uh, um, 
to us and I will happily go into a deeper dive on that because I can't help but feel there's just a little bit more that we that you're looking for that uh, we're kind of missing so absolutely um <clears throat> Let's go ahead. What we're uh, what we want to talk about right now. So so that's a little bit about what we're what we're adding into the config manager database. Um, and I mentioned what we wanted to talk a little bit about now is um, kind of the over kind of just kind of a, a maybe it's in a thousand foot view of what endpoint insights um, what the report categories have, and then we can we'll drill into some some reports that are a little bit more used than others. Um, there are a lot of reports here, um, and uh, we'll take a look. So the first thing to, to, to start with is that this will look very familiar to many of you who work uh, in Config Manager that are using uh, the SSRS inside of Config Manager. Um, essentially, Endpoint Insights gets added as a separate folder that you can click in and get to um, a whole other set of folders um, to, to, to see the actual reports. Now, if you're like me, you may be one of the people that enjoy doing it actually from inside the console. And you can also see the Endpoint Insights uh, reports and the, the categories right from inside the console if you wanted to. Um, you don't necessarily need to go through the web page. It's that, that's that either or, what's your preference? Um, either one will absolutely work. Website. We're just gonna, yep, go ahead. Yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and some people have stronger opinions than others. I was always in the console. Uh, Garth apparently likes to look at the website. Um, we're going to go in the website just because it's it's a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit easier to see things when we're when we're doing a demo for sure. Um, so, Marty, is this where I'm supposed to ask you about what type of information are we going to find in the uh, configuration manager folder? This is it. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> this is the one, the config manager folder. So the configuration manager folder over here on the left hand side, what we'll do is we'll kind of go through each of these categories and then just show what's inside as well. Uh, configuration manager is going to show you uh, some information about what is actually going on in your configuration manager environment. Um, things like you can see there's some site information, applications and packages that have been created in your environment. Um, software update health, uh, client health. This can be an interesting one as well, where you can actually see what the client health looks like in your environment. Um, you Hurry, see, you can, come on, yeah. 1900 uh, devices <laughs> have a problem here. <laughs> this, yeah, what, what happened to all of our devices? Um, so this is our demo environment where we have a bunch of devices that have been added to, to look interesting. Um, so uh, what ends up happening is that a, a report like this doesn't look very healthy because we have so many that are in error. Um, but it does show that you can actually see different client versions. Um, if you can see if the if things are healthy, and then you can actually see things like, oh, there are four devices here that looks like they're having hardware inventory issues, and uh, these are actually real devices. So I probably need to take. That's why Garth just gave me the look there. I probably need to actually take a look at these. These are real devices, um, but for some reason, it looks like the hardware inventory is not coming back on these right now, and so I'll need to take a look and see what's going on. So again, any of these you can click on uh, and get more information as you as you want to find out more things. We're still inside that configuration manager thing, but getting information about health status and, and things like that. Great. How does uh, that sound? Well, that's good. So then the second node says device warranty. What's in that one? Yep. So this is going to we taught we showed uh, real briefly that computer replacement costs. There's some other things that you can do with the device warranty information as well. Um, if you wanted to get a specific, you know, if you wanted to actually get a, um, uh, where am I seeing it here? Count of, you know, if you're looking to see the count of computers by age or by manufacturer, um, you can actually get an individual computer if you wanted to. This is where you would, where we, we had mentioned earlier. If you're looking to find out, like somebody calls and says, you know, a technician calls in, hey, this computer's having trouble. I think it might still be under warranty. Um, you know, whatever, you can absolutely uh, find a specific device, view the report and see exactly what it says. Like, yeah, nope, <laughs> not anymore. It's not. So 
you know, that kind of a thing where you can actually see, you know, what the information is about uh, warranty information. So there, there's a question in the chat. There's two questions in the chat. So the first sure. one answer is, um, uh, it does say something about Panasonic. I do know that we do have a method for c- collecting Panasonic. Um, if you want more detail about it, please um, contact us and we'll uh, give you more detail on that. It, normally I know the answer off the top of my head, but that's an older method that actually don't remember. So I'd have to go look it up. <laughs> uh, and then the second question is, is recast reporting available in a community version? And I'm unfortunately not at this time. Um, I say it that way because you never know. <laughs> this is the, is, is the longer answer, but not at this time. Um, if there was something in particular that you were looking for, again, uh, uh, touch base with us and we'll see what we can do. Absolutely. So there's another one that says endpoints in here, Marty. What, what did I find in endpoints? Yeah, so endpoints are going to be uh, the devices in your environment. Uh, and this is going to be where you can find out more information about them. So things like you can actually find out endpoint types, uh, battery health on your endpoints, if they are laptops or the ones that are laptops. Um, You can get, this is where your monitor information is going to exist as well. Uh, Server information. So you can actually look at some of these these interesting, you know, some of this kind of stuff here, endpoint type. Um, So you can actually list the computers by endpoint type. If I grab, um, I guess I'm I'm, I'm committed now. I I started looking at it. We'll just do all and we'll do all. And it might take just a second, but it should show us exactly what um, what our, our chassis type is for all of these things. And we can actually see um, these as well. One of the other things that, and this has actually been kind of a big, uh, another one that a lot of people really like is being able to see information, really specific information about one computer. Um, so I, if I get far enough, I'm hoping I get to the all in one computer view. Here we are. So this actually should show real, um, if you're interested in knowing about a specific machine, uh, is it still working? What are some, inf- what's some information about it? Um, this can also be helpful if you need to, it, you've got this machine and you need to replace it with a new machine for someone. You can actually kind of see exactly, you know, how are they connecting to their docking station? What, what dock do they have right now? How are they connecting to their monitor right now? Um, We can actually find that in our monitor information, Uh, you know, but what monitor do do they have right now? Um, So you can actually see something like this uh, Lenovo was connected to a Dell monitor, which is is fun. Um, And then you can also see that it has an internal, so it's a laptop, so it has its own internal monitor as well. yeah, so you can just kind of get more information about uh, about the devices themselves. And obviously, because we're talking about uh, Config Manager, you know, this also includes server information. So you can actually see some, you know, what roles and features are available on servers or have been installed on servers, that kind of a thing. So we have uh, two questions, one in the chat and one, uh, oh, there's three in the um, chat. So... Um, I'm going to answer a question, but while you do that, can you open up the recast web page on another tab for me? Yeah. Okay. So um, the first question, I'm going to answer the question uh, that's in the Q&A that says um, about the asset tag. Is, uh, is this a manual field or can you also? So the, 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 details that you saw within the report that is queried from um, uh, the system chassis and therefore that's extending the inventory and you will see whatever was tattooed in the system chassis uh, in that that, uh, report. So um, that that was a deliberate thing on our part to try to put in the asset tag so then I'll go off to the community, uh, go off to the chat one. And under the chat, can you go to products for me, uh, Marty? Uh, yep. 
and then endpoint insights. So this is the, so the question is, is uh, where can you get uh, the endpoint insights? So this is the endpoint insights page. If you click on this, you can get more information, more details, uh, understand the, the, a bit more about the product uh, from that level. Um, uh, Ben's uh, video, I really like Ben's video. He did that at uh, Miami. So um, it was a really kind of interesting thing. Uh, hopefully that answers your question about where you can um, learn more about that. Um, information available if the device is not currently powered on. So is the information, because we're using uh, configuration manager and hardware inventory, what, it, what we're getting from this is um, your normal hardware inventory is collecting that information and returning that to configuration manager. Um, what I generally recommend is if your hardware, to set your hardware inventory to once a day. Uh, most organizations seem to do that. And uh, that gets you very current uh, information uh, from that standpoint. So you do not need the uh, device to be on to collect up the information. Uh, Jeff's answering another question. Uh, uh, we are? We're starting up a new webinar about Endpoint Insights? Surprise, surprise. This is just a shameless plug, but starting next month, we will be uh, doing a five-part webinar series on all things Endpoint Insights. So you can almost treat this webinar as kind of, um, a, we'll say, an appetizer to the main course. Appetizer. Well, then that sounds like a great thing that if there's specific scenarios you guys want to learn about, I would encourage you to... Uh, let us know, particularly Jeff, since it sounds like Jeff is uh, 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 setting, the, setting us up or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so there's another question in the chat about, uh, so is Endpoint Insights included in the enterprise version of right-click tools? And the answer is no, it is a separate uh, uh, product uh, with that. I encourage you to talk to your uh uh, customer success manager person, they can help you out with um, learning more about that and what it means for you. Uh, and then we've got Stephanie's question in here, uh, is license trying based on the number of devices. So Endpoint Insights is uh, licensed on a per device. So you can license it based on the number of devices, uh, like workstations or servers or all of them. Hopefully Great. that answers the questions. So that brings us up to security. So what yeah. are you your security there, Marty? <laughs> Absolutely. So security information. Um, so what security information is going to have is things like software updates. What shares exist in your environment? Um, things like um, local accounts, if you're looking for those uh as well as endpoint protection. Um, so you can actually do something. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this dashboard right here, the endpoint protection dashboard. Um, so this is actually going to show in your environment. Um, and remember, we have about 1,970 machines that are um, kind of fake machines that are making things look interesting. Uh, but you can actually take a look at the antivirus signature version. Uh, that exists within your environment. So we have several, as you can see in here, and you can click on, on these to actually get further information about which devices maybe you need to check up on or somebody else needs to check up on for you. Um, but Marty, you haven't mentioned yet. Go ahead. What's that number one on your clean? <laughs> yeah. So we can actually even click on this and see which devices uh, might have been cleaned um, of a virus. We, we created actually uh, a test file that, that shows up as a virus. Uh, Garth did this with us yesterday, um, but you can actually show that it comes back and, and this is where you see the information. And again, if you wanted to find out more device, more information about the device itself, you can go and click on it, see whose it is. You might see the username here, but you know, if you need to check more information about it, you can do it there. Um, and you can even see what was done. If you hit up. the threat name, what, what does that show you? Ah. It shows you the actual the, the, the file. Actual file. It was uh, created. 
Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, eCar is a, a an official test uh, buyer, so you don't actually have to infect your computer to, to get results. Uh, it's done up by the European Antivirus Org. So it's a great little yep. uh, thing to test things. So, And that's why our cleaning action was no action because it, it's not. They, it, it's one of the ones that's actually defined uh, by antiviruses, knowing that it isn't a, um, it doesn't need any need to do anything with it. Um, other things you can take a look at: BitLocker and TPM status. So you can actually see information about what does BitLocker look like in your environment um, if you want to uh, there as well. So. Uh, there is a question in here that's fairly timely. It's saying if your antivirus uh, version is not end protection, but something else such as CrowdStrike, uh, Semantic, et cetera, can endpoint uh, adjust for this? And the answer is at this time, no. However, I strongly encourage you to go off to our ideas page and um, uh, put there. I, I forget if their idea is in there but, um, you know, if not, put it in there and vote it up. Because one of the things that you'll find out is um, try AV, because uh, I think I may have written and I'm generally lazy. So, okay. Um, uh, so it doesn't look like it's there. I know it was there under the enhanced soft thing and it looks like we didn't port it over to that. But uh, I strongly encourage you to put it up here put the idea, tell everybody to vote for it because um, we know how to do it. Uh, we just need to gauge interest. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, all, like when I say that, that, that um, you guys put your ideas up here, we seriously will go through this uh, uh, and it can have zero votes just like uh, the Microsoft guys. Uh, and we will, still do it, particularly if it's uh, uh, something that we think everybody will benefit from. So we do this and vote on all of the items in here. I believe you're limited to 10 votes. I'll say 10, but um, go nuts, vote, on, vote away on everything. Yeah, one of the things that I always like to say is um, with the right click tools, and, and it's the same with Endpoint Insights and, and Enhanced Off before that is a lot of what you see that exists with these reports and exists with the tools is somebody came to somebody and said, hey, you know what would be a really cool idea? If we could do this. And then somebody else said, oh, I think we could do that and then created it. And that's how, how the right click tools are created. That's how many of these reports were created. So um, yeah, absolutely. We're always looking for ideas for um, uh, for more more things that we can do. So it's ideas.recastsoftware.com uh, has that information for sure. So just to, to be clear, Endpoint Insights is more than reports. It's all about inventory. Right. Yes. Right. Sorry. I was reading one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more, about, more than just reports. It's about more information. <laughs> Uh, this is yeah, it's a really kind of a cool anecdote that uh, at one point system information and right click tools uh, didn't have the uninstall string after a version upgrade. Uh, he mentioned it and then it was the very next version it, it was back. So definitely something that we do take a look at uh, as we're going through things as well. Cool. So I think that was security, right, Garth? <laughs> I think that was security. Yes. Hey, awesome. uh, by the way, I got a done in the uh, chat window that says that there should be a new feature idea up there on, <laughs> on the page. So. Yeah. So if anybody else is interested, vote that, vote that up. Vote that <laughs> up. Sure. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So what did I find in your software? Software. Yeah. So software is going to have a ton of information about software that's installed in your environment. Uh, Microsoft Office, if you're trying to find different versions that might still exist uh, of different Microsoft Office, it's going to be included in there where you can actually go by uh, add-ins. You can see add-ins. You can see uh, details about a specific computer. Um, you can sort, you know, do different searches on Office there. Um, How about SQL we, Server? What do you find in your SQL Server? 
Yeah, so SQL Server, here's the information that we have about SQL Server. Um, list of computers by SQL Server edition? What do you think? Sure. Okay. I was going to go with the count because I always start with the count and move down, but that's oh, just... go ahead. Okay, so count count of SQL Server editions. Yes, and we'll go with our uh, six, sales you, EI. Whatever. You got it. Let's do sales. View that report. All right. So this is actually going to show where which. So this is a count of the. Uh, SQL Server editions in our environment. So you can kind of see in our installs what we've got. And then, as we know, we can click on any of these things. So if I wanted to see who has SQL Server 2019, I can click on that and it'll show the computers that have SQL Server 2019 uh, installed. So there is a question in here. Um, is this tied to any software metering data? So, uh, so this, the SQL Server data itself is not tied to any uh, software metering data at all. Uh, under the software inventory, uh, there's a report about recently used applications that does use the asset intelligence re um, recently used applications. Um, and then there is the another report in here that says uh, the last one total usage trends uh, for a collection that is using software metering uh details. So if you enable a software metering rule, it, you can go into this report and you can see the results of it being used over time. There's a twin to this report, which of course I can't see quickly as I scan this whole list, but uh, there is a twin to it that, uh, oh, uh, count of users and usage time by uh, software title. Um, Marty, by chance, do you have software metering rules? <laughs> uh, we don't have any set up right now in the demo environment. We, we should fix that for you uh, uh, for the future things on that. I hear we're doing a series about endpoint insights. Maybe uh, we could do it during, <laughs> do it for that series. Yeah, those rumors you've heard, Marty, are definitely true. I can confirm okay. that. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, All right. Oh, there you go. Um, but again, if there's some, again, if there's anything uh, that you think that uh, uh, that you want to learn more about, this is where I'd like to do, uh, where I encourage you to reach out to us and talk to us. Um, what I always say is there's over 150 reports in here. And, and I know I keep saying that Endpoint Insights is not about the reports. The reports are how you access most of the data. And a lot of it is we, we mix and match some of the configuration manager data and the uh, WMI provider data that comes from hardware inventory to give you this. Uh, uh, so this is where we're constantly um, listening to what your feedback is and um, trying to add it into to the products we and try to make it so it's more useful. So Marty, can you click on user programs for me? Sure can. And then can you go uh, computer software details for me? And then can you find our, our EI 1000? Because I think that one's, yeah. All right, and go view report. All right, so what I want to show on this one is on the far right side, you'll notice that it says source computer and source user. This is where you can tell was the software installed as a user or as a uh, uh, computer on the whole thing? So if you go down, the first user one, of, unfortunately, didn't give a nice title and add a remove program, but the second one did, and you can see it's Amazon Kindle. So on this particular uh, laptop, which uh, if you scroll up, I think it's Suzanne who's logged on to this one last. Uh, yeah, Suzanne. Uh, apparently, there's Amazon Kindle on that uh, thing. So this is how you can do uh, see things like what is user installed and what is uh, computer installed. Absolutely. 
Uh, one other thing I want to point out, because we're going to talk about it when we talk, uh, we're getting close, we're getting closer and closer on time. But when we talk about the um, the dashboard that exists in the Config Manager console, I want to point out, we're going to talk about this software dashboard here. So what you can actually do is I'm going to grab real devices, real virtual devices. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, um, but this is actually stuff that's installed on our, our demo PCs that we use for, for doing demos. Um, so we can actually take a look here, you know, and see um, exactly what's been, install on, been installed and get a little bit more information. And I'll tell you why this is gonna be important in a little bit as well. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a second when we, where, when we go to the, uh, the dashboard stuff. Yeah, cool. we're uh, definitely running short on time. On, <laughs> what was the other thing that we we're supposed to show on here? Oh, users. So yes, uh, let's go for users, and then uh, you know. yep. So map drives. <laughs> this one's gonna. What's in it? Map drives, mapped printers, and if you are looking to locate computers by username, you can absolutely do that too. Um, and then inside of each of that, these categories, they're just a little bit more information if you're looking for you know, a specific computers that are mapped to a specific printer or a specific, uh, if they're connected to a print server um, and that kind of thing. So you can actually get more information about mapped printers as well as map drives. So it's gonna look real similar for, uh, for map drives on that as well. And then locate computer, computer by username. So oh, here we go. Oh, not demo Garth. Should we do? Yeah, demo Garth's fine. Demo Garth, okay. Yeah, well, let's see what... you can do demo Garth, or you can do. Uh... Let's see what demo Garth is logged into. Oh, oh it's still what? logged into our config manager server. <laughs> yeah. So you could. Yeah, I don't think I signed actually... off yesterday when I. Uh, was yeah, cool. looks yeah. looks like you have an active session or some kind of a. Uh, so, or is that the computer being connected right now? So the com the green dot represents that the computer is on right now. This is using okay. the configuration manager uh, details that say the computer's on and it can take up to, I think it's five minutes that it will change from uh, green to, to black. Um, but that is the actual, uh, uh, that that computer is on. We can also see that this is leveraging the configuration manager data. So we can see that um, currently nobody's logged on. Oh, there you uh, go, yep. But the last log on de uh, detail is Fabian. Um, and that comes from uh, hardware inventory versus the console is showing up as I'm the top user of this uh, uh, computer. Apparently I've logged on the most uh on that so this is uh uh, uh how we search for things we, we it's any one of those three columns if you're the current user the last logged on or the console user you'll show up in this thing and this thing was deliberately designed to help with service desk trying to track down um a computer somebody called in and says hey where i'm logged on to this computer and of course the, 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 the person on the other end has no idea what their computer name is you type in what their username is and you'll find them that way throughout the whole thing. So Great. we do a, a question in the uh, uh, Q&A that says uh, address for the direct printing. So uh, instead of the print server. Uh, so no, no, go back to the printers. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was getting ready. You're getting ready on that one. Um, so uh, let's pick that. Uh, so go map printers detail, computer map. Oh, I swear I haven't started drinking anything. Other than <laughs> How about EI 1000? Yeah, let's, let's go for our EI 1000 on here. So what you're going to see on here is if it's mapped, whatever the port is. So if it happens to be a uh, server and share, you'll see the server and share. If it is mapped through uh, uh, an IP address, you'll see that. Uh, or for an example, the fourth one on that list, which is the brother printer, that's the, uh, I believe that is the net bias name officially for that printer that is sitting on the local uh, uh, network here. So there you go. Great. And that looks like he's answered that question. And Good deal. Uh, we got six minutes left and we're supposed to get to Q&A on here. Uh, 
<laughs> so, uh, so the last thing that we said we we're going to talk about is the Endpoint Insights dashboard. I think that we're not going to have a, a great a lot of time. So we're going to try to run through this really quickly. But while we do that, uh, Jeff, can you uh, type up a poll that says, you know, could we do a webinar specifically on right-click tools and, and all the rest of that? Yeah, let's see. Let me create one here fast. Okay. So while you're doing that, Marty and I will quickly go through this thing. So here's a, um, the, the right-click tool. I think they made the poll live. He's really uh we're quick. we're rocking and rolling back here. Yeah. You're, rocking back, back, but, you're a fast yeah. typist, man. Kind That's of a impressive. Zoom power user. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. All right. Um go, go so, it looks like the vast majority because I think this is uh I think the poll overwrites whatever you're showing, Marty. I don't think people can see anything while this oh, is going. Okay. I'm not sure. Um Oh, oh we can see. Over, yeah, overwhelming majority uh, shows that, yeah, there's definitely a strong interest in seeing how uh, Endpoint Insights and right-click tools play together. So okay. I'll end the poll now so you can continue on. All right. So, so we're going to try to do this really super quickly. Uh, Marty, uh, yeah, pick the software dashboard and pick the, uh, the virtual collection. Okay, view report. So you can see that it's still the same report is there, but now pick, uh, yeah, SMS Marshall, and then uh, check port, and then, so what you've done there is le uh, left click, right, Marty? That's a left click actually in this, uh, in this report viewer. Yeah, it's not right. So yeah, so what we can actually do uh, inside of the report viewer here is um, because it's part of the config manager console. And um, in this instance, uh, because I am using an enterprise version, I can see all of these tools um, and I can then take action right from inside here. So let's say if I was looking for SMS Marshall and I knew that I needed to uninstall version 2.0, I can go ahead and right click on the device itself, pop it up, go into system information. Uh, let's find that application and it's check for, oops, check, there it is. And I can actually go ahead and this is the computer I want to remove it from. I could have clicked there as well. Click uninstall and it will uninstall right from here. Um, and it works because every so often I have to go back to this, uh, this program and install it because it gets uninstalled by somebody doing a demo. Um, we'll, we'll talk real briefly. So because it's creating our own, you know, our own report viewer, essentially we can do some actions on it. Um, how licensing, this is becomes where a little bit of a question of how does licensing work for this? So because we have the EI license, we can use these tools. Um, if you had an EI license, we mentioned EI is separate. Uh, it can be purchased separately. If you have an EI license, but are using the community version of right-click tools, you can still see these reports and you can still take action on them. You would only be able to take community actions on them. Similarly, if you have a right-click tools enterprise license, but don't have an endpoint insights license, this dashboard is still here. And we've added a couple of uh, configuration manager native reports that already exist within config manager that you can take action on right here. Um, so you would still be able to do all of your right click tools uh, actions on these inside here. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to see the, the endpoint insights only reports. Well, to be honest, you'll actually see the, the demo for that. Fair yeah. enough. You'll see a sample report of what those reports look like. Okay, so um, we're sorry that we, we rushed through that uh, Endpoint Insights, but apparently Jeff has already found out that we're uh, doing a, another uh, webinar uh, on that. And what we promise to do, or well, what some, I assume I'm invited, but uh, definitely probably Marty 
uh, we'll show you more in depth how we can use the better together uh, uh, moniker uh, throughout the whole scenario. Um, we'd love to hear what you guys uh, want to learn more about. Uh, so let us know. Um, and for those of you at MMS uh, next week, seriously, um, track down Marty, myself, Courtney, Jeff, uh, Chelsea. Uh, I'm probably missing a million other people who are going to be there. Oh, Brian, Brian Dam is also going to be there, one of my um, uh, cohorts. Um, uh, we would gladly talk to you about uh, right-click tools, what you guys want to see, or endpoint insights, or shift left. Uh, you know, talk our ear off, tell us what you want to hear or see, and we'll be there. For, um, and I do have some webinar uh, or some gift cards we need to give away. So oh, yeah, yeah. Ariel F, David T, Lucas R, and Margaret L, um, you four are the, the winners of the $100 gift card. So check, it'll be coming from uh, me today. So check your inbox, check your spam. Um, and like we've alluded to probably three or four times throughout this webinar, we will have a five-part series coming out um, next month and then through uh, the rest of the summer on all things Endpoint Insights. So not just hardware inventory. Um, there'll be some pretty good stuff in there. Uh, the, the final one, Garth has got some, some hidden gems we like to talk, or we like to say, so stay tuned. Um, but thank you all for joining. Um, Garth, Marty, thank you both for a fabulous presentation. Uh, just like always, the recording to this presentation will be emailed out later this week so you can share it with your colleagues. It'll be um, also posted on our website. So if you'd like to learn more, um, recastsoftware.com. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch from there. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone.